Hi everybody and thank you again for watching another episode of Gaffer and Gear. In today's episode we're going to do a back to basics and we're going to talk about getting smooth fade ups and smooth fade downs out of lights that don't dim smoothly. All right, so I'm gonna give you a bit of a background story. I had a corporate video about a month ago and we had to get everything on trolleys and move it around so it had to be lightweight kits. And we went with some Spectrums because they're very slim, very easy to pack. And about partway through day two, the director decided they'd like to try a nice fade to black and a nice fade up on our talent using a light match spectrum over five seconds. And the problem with these is I've got the original version one controllers. And as you can see, they don't do the gentlest, most beautiful fade up and fade down, regardless of the dimmer curve you select, they shimmer and they tend to drop off at the bottom. So what if you're in a situation like that, the tool that you've got to use doesn't dim all that smoothly and you really want that smooth dim? Well. Luckily, myself and the director of photography are both what you'd refer to as old school. We've been around for about three or four decades. And when we both started out, lights actually didn't have built-in dimmers. That might seem very hard to comprehend these days. So if you had something uh, back then, like say a softbox, something like this, one way you could get it to dim was to get a cutter and literally just do this. Just literally cut the light out and then reveal it for your fade up. Now, if you're doing this, of course, you've got to make sure that you're using an appropriate cutter, something that's not going to catch on fire if your light's hot. All right, so let's have a look at this uh, technique and see if it works. Now, it's got some obvious problems. We'll talk about those in a sec. Okay, let's start off uh, complete black and reveal. and fading to black. And fading up again. All right, so that does work and you've got uh, quite a bit of control, but there are some obvious issues. So let's say we have the light um, horizontal and I'm very close to my set. Well, if I reveal this side of the light first. Well, this side of the set's going to light up before that side and vice versa. If I reveal this side, then that side's going to light up first. So if you want to reveal your light from the center, well, then you're going to need two people with two cutters. Okay, but you can get that done. Now, there is another issue with doing this and that is it reduces the size of the light aperture. All right, so if you haven't heard that uh, saying before, the aperture is the width of the light source. Okay, so the wider your light source, the softer it is, the narrower your light source, the harder it is. Okay, so at the moment we've got quite a soft or reasonably soft light source here because it's a wide aperture. But as I reduce that with my cutter, we're making the light harder. Okay, so let's have a look at that. And to show that I'll use, I'll use a uh, C-stand. Now, as you can see here, the shadow's reasonably soft off the C-stand, and as I start to cut it, the shadows will get harder. So there we go, we've got quite a, hard, quite a hard shadow there. Okay, reveal, quite a hard shadow, and soft. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, you could use that creatively, like for example, you might want to reveal um, a character and that character, you want them to feel a little bit ominous at the start when you're doing the reveal. Well, rather than doing an electronic fade up, you could use this technique and get some harder shadow lines on their face as you're doing the reveal. That could be quite cool. Other things uh, you could do using this technique, for example, if you want to do a reveal on, on some talent, you might want to reveal their, um, their clothes first, okay? Then reveal their face, okay? to, to, to um, to add a bit of dramatic uh, show to the person getting revealed. You know there's a person there yet, but you don't know who they are because you're not revealing their face uh, straight away in the fade up. You could go the other way, of course, reveal their face first and then reveal their clothing. So it does give you a few nuances that you can't get out of electronic dimmers. Now, what if you're in the situation where you have to do this, you have to use a cutter to reduce your light level, but you don't want the shadows to change? 
All right, so a way you could work around this is to do what we call a double break. Okay, so you could have a four x four diffusion frame here, for example, and then have the light here and use your cutter in between the two. That'll give you softer shadows and a softer transition. Now I'm gonna go through another technique I used to use because you don't always have a soft light source to start off with. Sometimes the only thing you've got in your kit is a hard light and you still need to do a gentle fade up and a gentle fade down. Well, here's a method that I used to use for that. So I've got a hard light here and I've got it pointing directly into a black. So the idea is we don't have any light bouncing back towards the talent. And then I'm just gonna simply use a reflector. So as I bring the reflector up, it will illuminate me. As I take the reflector down, I will go into darkness. Now, of course, you can have a bit more fun here. You can also, you know, play with your tilt angles on your reflector. So let's see how gentle a fade down I can do. And again, you, I could lower the reflector, raise the reflector. You could tilt the reflector, pan the reflector on and off. And you could also uh, use a combination of methods. So uh, I've had jobs where I had one job where I needed a large amount of sunlight to come through a window in a church. So we put up a six by six silver reflector. We had two M40 HMIs pointing up at it. And we had uh, myself and one of my best boys with cutters just reducing the light, hitting the reflector from the HMI. So, you know, you don't necessarily need expensive dimmer technology, expensive dimmer racks, top end lights to do smooth fades to black. You can do it with some simple hardware. So bear that in mind. Sometimes your simple hardware can be more effective and more important than the lights that you actually own. All right, take care everyone. See you on the next episode.